And, and he apologized. He said, well, you'll know the next time. And I'm yes, I will. He said, thank you. These are he said, don't be times in the history oh, of God nations when those bag, possessing mask, moral courage must take a stand. In the days of Queen Esther, it was said, perhaps you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. And I would say you and I are in this nation for such a time as this. In the ancient story, Esther prevailed. She was given the signet ring to rewrite the decrees. Would you like to do it? The forces of destruction were brought down by the hand of God and the courage of the people. It's time in this nation to get the signet ring back and rewrite the decrees. This is our day and these are the times and circumstances we are in. It is our strategic moment to take a committed stand. I want to give you three quick points. You know, every good message has three quick points. First, it's time to remember. We so easily forget our history, especially when forces of false hope and change continue to rewrite our history and pervert the real story of our nation and its greatness. It is time that we remember the faith of our founding fathers, despite the voices of liberals and God-haters, we are a Christian nation. And those who take time to read the founders and their documents will discover this is overwhelmingly true and historically accurate. We got more support. Remember the fight of our founding fathers for freedom and liberty. Their commitment went beyond the vote. It went beyond an opinion. It went beyond a rally. Freedom was obtained at a great cost. Remember the foundations they put in place by divine providence. The word says, if the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? I will add, what will the nation do? What will our children do? Remember the future and destiny they were pursuing. The deep longings in their heart that one day this nation would become the shining city on a hill, a beacon of light to the nations of the world. And I believe for many years that has been our story. Secondly, it is time to re-engage in the cause of our day. There is a very familiar story that comes out of the pages of 1 Samuel 14. I believe you'll all recognize it. When the nation of Israel was being held hostage by a ruling giant, a young champion arose. When overwhelming forces threatened and overwhelming courage and confidence came alive in a young man named David. David represents a generation who knows what time it is and is ready to engage. I believe that we are that generation. David saw the threat, he saw the fear of his countrymen, and he declared confidently, is there not a cause? These words were spoken by a teenage boy who came upon what to him was an incredulous scene. An entire army paralyzed in fear over the threats and the cursings of an avowed enemy of God. The destiny of his nation was being weighed in the balance and would be determined on that battlefield that day. You know the story well. David, a shepherd boy, delivering lunch to his brothers, was suddenly thrust into a moment of history that would require of him total commitment to what he carried in his heart. You and I have been thrust into a moment of history. These same words, is there not a cause, should be echoing in our hearts and sounding across our nation these summer months as we ramp up to the election season. From the pulpits of our churches, in Sunday school classes, coffee shops, around kitchen tables and in the media, Christians and citizens of every kind or every belief must be discussing and speaking out on the issues of the day and those who are in alliance with those issues. Yay. Religion and politics are connected, like it or not. It was for both political and religious reasons that this nation was formed. Our founding fathers were overwhelmingly men of faith, many of whom were ordained ministers of various denominations. They engaged and expected debate from those holding a biblical worldview and those who didn't. Just as the army of Saul was paralyzed and ineffective, ineffective by fear, it appears that the Christian community is content to be silent 
while the godless giants of our day take the center stage. And I say again, is there not a cause? I would like to put forth a challenge today specifically to Christians, pastors, spiritual leaders of all kinds. Come out of your comfort zone. Come out of the safe place of supposed separation. Return to the passion for liberty and freedom that was heralded from our pulpits in the early days of our nation. Every election season, I get a letter in the mail from Barry Lynn. Some of you may know who he is. And this letter is threatening me not to speak out on political issue. Well, let me tell you, it just fuels my fire. He can stop sending the letters anytime. We must change our mindset. Make no mistake, the political arena of this hour and the elections ahead will directly affect our children and our grandchildren. There is an invisible path from every politician, every piece of legislation to my home and to my children. I cannot overstate this. David took the words of the Goliath and the thought of being ruled by the Philistines directly to his own heart. His actions were not out of fear, anger, and despair. They flowed out of courage, responsibility, and a cause that transcended his life. Our cause today transcends us. There is a battlefield of politics, laws, ideas, and moral causes. In my lifetime as a Christian, the church remained in the camp of Saul, fearful and ineffective. All the while, we became a nation that allowed the murder of over 50 million unborn babies. As a father of seven, I shudder at the thought and we should all, and we are all, deeply grieved. 